pleased to continue our conversation with my former congressional colleague and the former attorney general of the state of Florida, Bill McCollum, who joins us again from Washington, D.C. Bill, Brian Brown in that same interview told NBC News that the gay marriage debate has turned pro-marriage people into David battling Goliath. But in the final analysis, isn't this more like the Tower of Babel, where everyone is confused because the Supreme Court is not taking up a case? Well, I don't know about uh, the Tower of Babel or what the analogies are, but the Supreme Court is ducking this as much as possible. Eventually they will. Uh, they'll take up a case from a state which does not permit uh, the marriage between uh, two people of the same sex. And I think that the cards are pretty well stacked in favor of their ultimately making the decision to, to allow that to be called a marriage. I don't personally favor that any more than I suspect you did, J.D. Uh, my views are marriage itself should be between a man and a woman. Uh, that's the biblical sense of it. That's the historical sense in the U.S. Uh, it is a fact, though, that, that the movement is in that direction the other way, and I think the court is going to go along with many of these lower courts and ultimately make that decision, but obviously not on the cases presented to it um, on the other side to try to, to seek a reversal. So it, it's a trend, and it's what it is, and there's not anything you and I are going to be able to do about it. So, Bill, if, if we're hearing you correctly, you believe it's just a matter of time before all states allow gay marriage. Well, I think it's just a matter of time before the Supreme Court rules at some point on a case that says that all states have to allow uh, gay marriage. That's what I think. I, I hope uh, I'm wrong, but that's what I think. And, um, you know, we've had for some time the argument that people of the same sex could have the same legal rights through a status that they would have contractually and otherwise. The marriage is really something that's sanctified uh, mostly by the church and uh, to a degree, of course, under state law uh, for certain purposes. Uh, it, it is used a, as a legal basis for property rights and so forth. Uh, but there are other ways to get around that besides calling it a marriage. This is very a very cultural issue right now uh, for everyone. It's a very sensitive issue. It's a very explosive issue. Uh, but I do think the Supreme Court is headed in the direction that, that the state courts, uh, lower state courts, have, have been headed for some time now uh, in, in making this uh, a legal status. Having said that, so what do you think the GOP's response should be to all of this? And will it affect the midterm elections? Well, I think that uh, for the most part, it's going to be an individual basis. I don't think the GOP speaks with one voice uh, on cultural issues as much as you might think. Um, but I believe most uh, Republicans uh, still believe that it, it's a marriage should be between a man and a woman. Um, again, the question would be uh, your court uh, nominees and appointees and so forth, but that's not going to be decided until you elect a president. Uh, and that becomes another battleground, uh, another issue in the issue of the support of those who feel one way or the other on, on this issue. Uh, but I don't think this should be the central issue. I think the Republicans, despite our position, ought to be focused on the Affordable Care Act, should be focused on the differences on the, the job creation and the war policies of this president, all the things that are so bad out there right now, and, and people who feel it viscerally in the economy and understand the president has messed up terribly in Iraq and elsewhere in Syria uh, and in Ukraine. I think we should be making those the front page issues, uh, not the cultural issues, even though I, I personally have my beliefs, and I think most Republicans do have strongly held convictions. And, and Bill, mindful of that, uh, it is interesting. We both have run uh, for office as Republicans, both of us socially conservative. But just taking a look with the minute we have left, does this mean that social conservatives and the evangelical community in particular may be losing its influence within the Republican Party? I don't think it's losing its influence. I think they're still strong about it. But I think at the end of the day, J.D., um, there are two things at play. One is self-interest. Some candidates of our persuasion are going to want to not get themselves involved in something that might cost them some votes unnecessarily when they can't win. And number two, I believe that uh, at this point in time, there is a realization that some of the other issues I just described are going to make the decision in these races. Um, even though they may feel passionate about an issue, they're not going to want to profile it in a general election because they 
they don't achieve the end result we want. We, we ought to retake the Senate. We want a Senate majority this time. It's very, very important to the future of the country and important to uh, the cultural conservatives uh, in the country as well. So uh, in the country as well. So it, it's a matter of where you put your emphasis, not a matter of changing your beliefs. I don't think they're fundamental. I don't compromise mine. It's all uh, a sense of timing, Bill. All a sense of timing. And unfortunately, it, we're out of time. Bill McCollum, thanks for joining us.